Hi all, this is Jeannie with Nona Scraps. I've had a couple questions about creating photographs that are segmented. Um, I know that there's one other scrapbooking program that you can put in a photo placeholder and you can select X number and the one photo will fill them all. We don't quite have that option, but it's really not difficult to get a similar effect in iScrapbook. I've prepared my page and one of the most important parts of this technique of taking one photograph to it fill up the three segments so that it still moves and looks like a content, uh, consistent photograph is the setting up of the grid. On my layers page down at the bottom I found a grid. I want it to show above my artwork. <clears throat> I want to snap to my grid and my spacing is going to be reasonably important. You need kind of small boxes for this because you're going to be sizing photographs se sequentially and you need them to be the same size. So you want you don't want them to be a whole lot bigger than your placekeepers or placeholders, but you want them to be slightly larger, maybe. So I set my grid at two tenths of an inch with a guideline every five inch. And I'm going to save it as a default because that's usually the one I use. The next thing I'm going to do, I have set up my page. In my shapes, I brought in the square and I sized it to be approximately what I want. I then went to format and it's not grayed now. Let me see. I'll click on that. Let's go up to format. Define as placeholder. And I just turned off my placeholder so now I get to define it and I want it to be a photo so I'm going to click OK. I still have an outline and that's fine. I will leave it for now because it may help me um, in the end see what I'm doing. It may not but I can worry about it later. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click off of my placeholder and to be honest with you I've got a background that's already set up. It's just simply hidden so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to scroll down to the picture that I want which is this one. No, I'm sorry, this one. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to drop it into my first photo placeholder. I hope you see that the outside has turned blue. What I want in particular is this shaded area to be there because this is what's going to make the difference in the end. Now I'm going to move my photo and I am going to actually size it up so that I get the width one, two, three, the width of those three placeholders and maybe a little bit more. With snap to grid on it will snap to the grid so I don't have to worry about it. Then I'm going to br bring my photo down and this is pretty much what I want maybe not quite but it will work for this and I am going to you can see that it's very transparent outside the photo placeholders I'm going to double check where my lines are and I want to fit it to my grid making sure going to be testy right now. There we go. That I remember where my grid lines are. Just for the sake of documentation, I have this along this line and along this line almost over to this line. We'll just do that. So these are one inch squares, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches across, one, two, three, four, five, six inches down. Now I'm going to select, click off the placeholder, and it's selected. I'm going to return to my picture, and I'm going to not do that. That was wrong. I'm going to drag it to my second placeholder. Sometimes it doesn't want to go in the way it should. I just go back and 
replace it again. Replace the placeholder image. And you can see now I have the shaded um, image. I can grab that and move it up just to enlarge it a little bit so I can start moving with my picture. Again, that was just about right. I'm impressed. The other thing I can say is that when you start enlarging, when you look at the line between the two placeholders, you're going to see a continuous image. And it will make a little bit of a difference in your picture. Sometimes if your other image is, is over here, it, it, this tends to become clear where it's, it's overlaying. And finally, I'm going to bring this one in to my last image. Drop it. Hopefully it'll come. I've noticed with this particular version of the software, it's not, I'm not going to say it's a glitch, because I think it's wonderful that these snap. It's just inconvenient for this purpose. And I just keep, you know, messing with it till I get it what I want. Again, I'm going to size it up, bringing it over to my lines. And if I do the corners, I've done it proportionately. And you can see right here where it's kind of um, transparent. This line becomes continuous. This line is continuous. Hard to see, but this line is continuous as well. Click off. And there's my three segments of my picture. Now, I'm going to play just a little bit. I'm going to go back to my Layers menu. I am going to turn off my grid. I am going to go to my layers and I'm going to visualize my background and my background image. And I can do either leave it with that black outline or at this point I can come in and I could make that outline larger. I kind of like just the real thin one, but that gives a very, very, very rich look to my picture. I hope that this little technique will just increase your satisfaction with this software. I love it. Oh, before I go on, don't forget to save it. Command S on my Mac, and it shows up over here, and I'm good to go. I hope that you enjoy playing with this. There's a lot of different techniques you can do, a lot of different looks you can get. Until next time, bye.